Our lab has been establishing a criterion for the microwave-driven breakdown of gas inside of a microgap. Working with argon, we've been testing our collisionally-based breakdown model and predicting the pressure below which breakdown will not occur in a microgap and above which it will. Our results have shown that this preferential location of plasma is determined by electron loss to gap faces. The previously published breakdown model begins with the effective electric field inside of an actual electric field E sub zero, colliding with neutrals at a frequency nu sub c, which is linear in pressure with a proportionality constant b. It was demonstrated in an earlier paper from our group that the effective electric field at the point of breakdown is proportional to pressure to some power law m. And when you put those three arguments together, you get the model equation for the threshold electric field at breakdown as a function of 2 pi times the frequency and the fit parameters b, m, and a scaling constant c, which depends on the gap size on account of the fact that breakdown can occur in the fringing electric fields. The rest of the model concerns motion of electrons in the high frequency electric field. Inside of a small gap space where you have metal walls, there's a maximum amplitude that electrons can have for their oscillation before they begin to be absorbed by the walls. That's the hypothesis that we make, that the maximum size of a gap for loss to the walls is twice the oscillation amplitude. If we put all that together, the threshold electric field expression and the hypothesis that when electrons have an oscillation range which exceeds the size of the gap in which the electrons are oscillating, the pressure below which breakdown will no longer occur in the micro gap depends on the size of the gap to this combination of the various exponential fit parameters we have up above. And that's what we are testing out in this project, that the transition pressure to micro gap breakdown depends and the gap size in this way. With the model equation for the threshold breakdown electric field as a function of pressure and these fit parameters, the experimental test of a model then would be to generate such breakdown curves at different gap sizes. To generate a series of threshold electric field versus pressure graphs, a reentrant microwave cavity resonator is used. Up close you can make out a foreshortened quarter wavelength resonator with a very small gap that you can't see in the picture so we'll turn to the solid model used in the electromagnetic field simulator. A metal pin serves as a tuner and this fixed rod sharpened to a cone shaped end is the resonator and the space between them is the micro gap. HFSS is used to determine the electric field inside the micro gap and related to the power dissipated which we can actually measure and so we're able to determine the electric field in the micro gap for a given input power and hence we have a way to find the threshold electric field. Inside the micro gap it's parallel plate fields, straight and homogeneous, but outside the micro gap you have this fringing field. At times when the pressure is low enough that electrons oscillate with an amplitude larger than the micro gap, breakdown can no longer happen in the micro gap, but electrons oscillating out here in the fringe field can still gain enough kinetic energy to initiate plasma, in which case the plasma is outside the micro gap. Each breakdown curve is composed of two branches, the bulk branch and the microplasma branch. In the lower pressure bulk branch, the breakdown occurs in the fringing field around the gap, and in the higher pressure microplasma branch, breakdown occurs inside the gap. And the transition between those two regimes occurs at a pressure that increases as the gap becomes smaller. Above the pressure where the transition occurs, you can see that the breakdown is inside the gap, and below it, you can see that the breakdown is occurring in the fringing region around the gap. Also included with this breakdown curve is the maximum gap size for wall loss divided by the size of the gap. When that ratio equals 1, you're at a pressure below which breakdown cannot happen in the gap. And if you follow where it's 1, you see that's exactly where the transition occurs. Below the pressure where that ratio is 1, the electrons are lost to the walls and the preferential location for plasma is outside the gap. So the model gives us an opportunity to predict the pressure where that transition occurs as a function of gap size based on the fit parameter B, which is the collision frequency per tor. And that predicted transition pressure compares well to the measured transition pressures marked out on the breakdown curves. Measured transition pressure versus predicted transition pressure is a line with slope of 1 to within uncertainty. 
So the hypothesis we made that wall loss will suppress microgap breakdown when the electron oscillation reaches the size of the gap is confirmed by the agreement of the measure transition pressure with that predicted using the collision frequency per tor parameter B. This work was supported by an award from the United States Department of Energy Office of Science, Office of Fusion Energy Sciences.